Hashkiveinu Adonai Eloheinu. Okay, so here's a little summary of what's happening in this parsha. We're coming to the end of the Joseph story, and Judah approaches Vayigash. That's what that means. Igash is to approach. So Judah approaches Joseph to plead for the release of Benjamin, offering himself as a slave to the Egyptian ruler in Benjamin's stead. Remember, he doesn't know who Joseph is. Upon witnessing his brother's loyalty to one another, Joseph breaks down and reveals his identity to them. Ani Yosef, I am Joseph, he declares. Is my father still alive? The brothers are overcome by shame and remorse, but Joseph comforts them. It was not you who sent me here, he says to them. It was all part of the divine plan to save us from the famine. Okay, the brothers rush back to Canaan with the news. Jacob comes to Egypt with his sons and their families, 70 souls in all, and is reunited with his beloved son after 22 years. On his way to Egypt, he receives the divine promise, fear not to go down to Egypt, for I will make you into a great nation there. I will go down with you into Egypt, and surely I will also bring you back up again. So all of this is the prelude to the Exodus story. Joseph gathers the wealth of Egypt by selling food and seed during the famine. Pharaoh gives Jacob's family the fertile region of Goshen to settle, and the children of Israel prosper in their Egyptian exile. Okay, so here's our opening verse of the Parsha, Vayigash Elav, Ju Judah approached him, meaning Joseph, uh, I'm sorry, Vayigash Elav Yehuda, Vayomer, and he said, Bi Adoni Yadaber Na Avdecha Davar Ba'ozne Adoni, please, my Lord, let your servant speak a word in the ears of my Lord. And please don't let your anger flare up against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh. So this is how Judah approaches Joseph. And we'll begin by looking at a totally different verse. <laughs> this is from Psalm 147, this beautiful verse that says, Ki tov zamra Eloheinu ki na'im nava tehila. How good it is to sing pleasant praises to our God. The 18th century Hasidic sage, Rabbi Elimelech of the Zhinsk, expounded on this verse by retranslating it like this. It is good when the singing of pleasant praises arises from the God within us. Why does he do it like that? Well, he's seeing this word Eloheinu in a different way. Eloheinu is usually... It's ordinarily translated, and, and its plain meaning is our God. And that's in the blessing formula. We always hear this word, Eloheinu. But he's understanding it not as our God, but as our God, meaning the part of us that is God, the, our deepest level of being. And I was so pleased when I saw this Hasidic teaching, because as many of you probably know, this is how I understand this word as well, Eloheinu. It's talking about the transformative potential of prayer, that we begin perhaps with the idea that we're crying out to God from our hearts, we're crying out to that which is beyond us, above us, our source, the, the, sub, the, the, the root of being, we're calling out to that. But the potential of that is to recognize that the calling out itself is God calling out to itself in a sense that we go beyond uh, the limitedness of identification with the singing, with the body, with the feelings, with the mind, and recognize that all of that is just part of the one reality. So Rabbi, Rabbi Eli Melech is speaking about prayer as a self-transcending experience through which the deepest divine dimension of our own being sings within us. But teachings like this can be particularly challenging to many who feel disconnected from or uninspired by scripted Hebrew prayer texts. How can you, how can you really authentically cry out from your heart and have God sing within you when you're just reading the words on the page? 
So whether the traditional words feel foreign and alienating because they're unfamiliar to us, or whether they're so familiar that they're boring and tedious, it's really the same question. It can go in either direction. I feel disconnected from the words because I don't know what they mean. I didn't grow up with them. Or I've been saying them so many times that it's like they've lost their meaning. It doesn't matter. How can words that are imposed upon us externally become authentic expressions of the heart leading to the recognition of their divine root, which means, of course, our own divine root. So we're looking now again at the beginning of our Parsha. Vayomer bi Adoni adaber na avdecha. He said, please, my Lord, let your servant speak. The Hebrew wording in Judah's plea with Joseph has a strange idiom. It has this word be. What is be? The word be is usually left untranslated. Literally, be means in me. So a literal rendering would be, be in me, my Lord, let your servant please speak. Or to say it more clearly, may my inwardness express itself in speech. If Judah's character represents the expression of inwardness and authenticity in this passage, Joseph's character represents externality. Why? Joseph is a political leader. For Judah and his brothers, Joseph is, or seems to be anyway, a foreigner, something alien. And most importantly, Joseph is hiding his inner identity from them. They can only see the most external part of him, that is his title, his role. But Judah, the internal and authentic self, approaches Vayigash, the external and foreign form, with these three special qualities, humility, sincerity, and offering. First, he approaches with humility. Vayomer bi Adoni daber na avdecha. Please, my Lord, let your servant speak. So what is humility? Well, One way to explain it is that it's the opposite of judgment and ego. With judgment and ego, you've already sabotaged any potential for connection before you can even begin the conversation. If you want to connect, leave those behind. This quality of humility is represented by the sphere of hod on the tree of life. Second, he approaches with honesty or sincerity. How will I go up to my father if the boy is not with me? Let me not see the misery that will befall my father. He's expressing how he's really feeling. Judah brings his true concerns and fears, which is also the way to approach prayer. Whatever's really going on inside you, that is your korban, your offering, which, uh, which means your means to draw close. Fill the sounds of the words with your own sincere cries. This quality of sincerity is represented by the Hebrew letter tav. Lastly, he approaches with this spirit of offering. So now, please let me, your servant, stay instead of the boy as a slave to my Lord, and may the boy go up with his brothers. On one hand, Real prayer has to be sincere, which means it has to come from the depths of our own desire. But then it needs to go beyond that and be offered for the sake of others. Don't limit your motivation for practice to be merely for your own experience, but rather to refine yourself so that you can be of more benefit to others, to bring light into the world. This quality of offering is represented by the sphere of chesed. Then the externality of Joseph will break down. As it says, now Joseph could not bear all those standing beside him, and he called out, take everyone away from me. And he wept out loud and said to his brothers, Ani Yosef, I am Joseph. Bring these three qualities to your practice, and it too will open itself to you, revealing itself as your brother, your sister. It isn't cold or alien after all. And how do you do it? How do you invoke these three qualities within yourself? Kitov zamre Eloheinu ki na'in nava tehila. How good it is to sing pleasant praises to our God, or even more deeply for that godliness within to sing forth praise. The secret is in the vibration, the vibrations we make in our bodies when we chant. Don't just read it or recite, chant. Don't just speak, sing. 
Through music, the nervous system relaxes and even incomprehensible words can become carrier waves for the depths of the heart, drawing you back into connection with the present moment and your deepest self. You may have had this experience of singing Hebrew prayers and putting the authenticity of your own heart into the sounds that you're making with your voice. It, it might be connected to the literal meaning of the prayers, but it might not. That's not really the full point of it. The real essential point of it is that the vibrations are kind of like uh, a spade with which to dig into yourself. <laughs> the vibrations can uncover the feelings that are perhaps normally uh, hidden by all the impressions that are made on the nervous system all day long. It's so important to give ourselves this opportunity to practice because everything we, everything we experience throughout the day is like covering up what's going on in our depths. And in order to do that, we have to, we have, to have the intention for those, that depth to emerge and reunite with ourselves, which means being brought into consciousness. But we also, it's not enough to have the intention. We have to give it the space and the time to happen. <laughs> and that's what it means to sit in silence together, but also why we begin with the chanting to, to loosen it up, to dig into it, and then to go into the silence to let that process unfold as it unfolds. So in this time of Shabbat Vayigash, the Sabbath of approaching, may everything we approach that appears foreign and alienating open with warmth and connection, revealing the secret brother sisterhood between all, th all beings united by the power of song. <laughs> Ha-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-